Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 113. Floor 113 will have you facing off against the brother-sister duo of Kuwazu and Kuwana. Kuwazu's core passive is this one here, Fire Blessing. Based on the number of debuffs that he has on him, every third turn or so, he will spawn a multitude of different adds. When these adds spawn, they increase the damage dealt to you by Kawazu and Kawana, and also increase the damage that the burns these two characters put on your team deal. They also put a uncleansable burn on your entire team called Endless Flame. In order to disable the buffs on Kawazu and Kawana and cleanse this Endless Flame, you need to kill the adds as fast as possible. As for Kawana, her passive says, hey, I'm immortal, so don't bother trying to kill her. Most of her moves blind your team, which plays into Kawazu's second passive here, Furious Fire Energy. Whenever you attack him, if you miss or don't land a critical hit, then there is a 75% chance your entire team gets two burn stacks, does a lot of damage. Obviously, when the adds are up, those buffs make those things hurt and can kill your uh, kind of primary damage dealers very quickly, very, very easily. Even if you manage to land a critical hit and don't miss, there's still a 50% chance that the person attacking Kawazu is going to take a burn stack. So having a cleanser is a must on this floor. I'll be honest with you, though. The problem with this floor is actually the first encounter. The second one isn't too bad. It's this first one here with Carbuncle Fluma, and that is because of this passive here, Ancient Fiery Magic. Reduces the effect of all healing received by fire elemental heroes by 80%. At the start of a turn, it spells all buffs from a fire elemental soul weaver and stuns them for one turn, ignoring effect resistance. What this passive basically says is if you play Tamarin, she can never take a turn on the first floor. So if you want to play Tamarin on this floor and you look at the statistics for Abyss Floor 113, you will see Tamarin is the most played character. That is because they are playing Tamarin with the Terran or Guard strategy, which you can absolutely do if you want to do that. So if you want to just play Tamarin, Roz, Camilla, Terran or Guard and blitz down the Carbuncle, be my guest. Everyone has done it that way on YouTube. I am trying to show you an alternative way that is still a free to play option if you do not want to play Terran or Guard. Now, additionally, the Carbuncle stealths himself throughout the fight with this Shining Cheer and buffs the rest of the ads. So because of the fact that he is in stealth and he has this barrier and immunity, it is very difficult to get to him with AoEs to knock him out of stealth and it's very difficult to burst him down. The way the fight is intended to go is you're supposed to kill these three Radiant Pyros before you take down the Carbuncle and then move on to the brother-sister duo of Kawazu and Kawana. The problem is these Radiant Pyros, when you kill them and they go to one HP, they get immortality for two turns here. That is this passive here, Indomitable Will. Okay, sure, I just wait that stuff out, right? Well, the problem is when they're under 30% health, they hit like a truck and get to attack twice each turn and the damage can actually kill a lot of non-tank characters in one go. So you have to have a strategy in order to survive the damage when these guys are at one HP. So either you got to strip the immortality or sleep them or have some kind of way to actually kind of weather the storm of all the damage that they're going to be doing. Now that you understand the mechanics, let's talk about who we're playing and why. First up, Brig is going to be our tank here over Adventurer Raz, and that is because of the frequency which he kind of procs his S3 here, Limitless Sword Arts. In case you don't know, his S1 can just trigger his S3 if you have enough Fighting Spirit. This is a full strip, so it gets rid of the attack buff that the Carbuncle keeps giving you the adds, allowing you to survive. It also could strip Immortality, and more importantly, you can use it to slow key adds to buy yourself time in order to actually heal. He is incredible for this first floor in comparison to Raz. Raz is the better tank if you want to play Terran or Guard as your main DPS, but for this strategy, Brig is going to be a core option. As for how we are playing him, Arius is the artifact, health percentage as the ring, health percentage uh, necklace as well, sorry, I got these backwards, and then boots our speed here. So effectiveness here, it doesn't need to be 85% like you're expecting from Raz and other characters. Because Limitless Sword Arts has a 50% effectiveness buff built into it, 35% is fine for this character. Anything above that is going to be great. Last important note, try to get his speed over 215, 220 if at all possible. In my test clears for this actual floor, I was playing him at 185, 190. That was not fast enough, and I found myself randomly dying and getting more RNG than I should. 
So again, a little bit of speed would help out on this character a lot. Next up is Angelic Montmorency as our primary healer. Same thing that we said about Brig is true here. Try to have over 200 speed on Angelic Montmorency. 185, you'll find issues sustaining yourself and surviving on the very first floor. So over 200% would be great. As for what we're playing, Magaraha's Ancient Tome can be your free-to-play artifact choice. I would play Rod of Amaryllis if I had it, though. That is a five-star and not something that is free-to-play friendly. So I'm not going to play it. As for the actual gear here, Health Percentage Necklace. I have the ring as effect resistance, but you don't really need to play it. You could play Health Percentage here if you wanted to, because most of the debuffs ignore Iara on this floor. And then our boots here are going to be Speed. And then... For our DPS here, it's going to be the connection duo again of Camilla and Commander Lorena. So, Camilla is built pretty much exactly the same way that she was in all the previous videos that we used her. She is basically a second copy of Roz, or in this case, a first copy of our character Roz because she gives herself an attack buff with tactical maneuver. Her basic attack skill becomes a guaranteed dual attack with Lorena. She doubles as a second copy of Lorena as long as she has that attack buff. Daydream Joker is our artifact. And then the necklace and ring, you can play whatever you want as long as your effectiveness is over 85%. If you need bulk, go for health percentage. If you need damage, go for critical hit damage. Just make sure your boots are speed. And then finally, the MVP of all of these Abyss Guides so far, Commander Lorena played exactly the same way you've seen her played in all of these videos. Daydream Joker is the artifact. Critical hit damage necklace, attack percentage ring, attack percentage boots. Everybody keeps saying to me in the YouTube comment section, can I just play X instead of Lorena? Yes, you can absolutely play another damage dealer instead of Lorena. The question is, why would you want to when she's better than like literally every other single target DPS in Abyss, except for like Terran or Garn? At this point, if you've already got Lorena or you've made it this far without Lorena, just stick with whatever DPS you're already playing. All right, now that I got that out of the way, as well as all the mechanics, let's jump into the actual fight. All right, so at the start here, what you want to do is barrier up with Brie, and then you want to use his skill three on an add in order to get a defense break, hopefully uh, the slow kind of as a bonus. You could go for the Carbuncle, but it's just going to stealth itself here, and then you're not going to be able to hit it anymore, so it's a waste. Anyways, Montmorency, try to sleep one of the adds. Attack buff up your Camilla. And then try to get this one into Immortality immediately by going S1 into S1. Now, I know I said they do a ton of damage when they're low on health, but they have a stacking attack buff throughout the fight. If you get them into Immortality on your first rotation, it's not that bad, right? Like, Lorena took a lot of damage, but it's not an instant kill. Have Breed go here. Montmorency could heal up Lorena. And then we could go and start working on a second one. So now we have two. See a lot of damage coming out. Heal up. Alright. And now that this one's out of immortality, we could focus it down. Now you may have noticed this is going into the carbuncle here. The Carbuncle is not actually the highest attack character here, right? If you get that strip, you have a window now where you have one turn to burst down the Carbuncle if you so choose. But I'm not going to do that. Obviously, my strip got resisted. But had the Carbuncle been revealed and defense broken, I wouldn't soul burn here and go after it. Because it's very unlikely that you will kill it before it goes back into stealth. I think it is better for you to focus on the adds. As their attack stacks up throughout the fight, then obviously Brig will start targeting them instead. Anyways, S3 this here. Hopefully this picks up a kill. Sadly it did not. S2 to heal up. Kill this. Just don't want to have any chance of taking damage here. A ton of damage coming out again on Brig. Do S2 in order to give the barrier to everybody else and also keep the fighting spirit rolling. Now we're going to try to focus down the one that can't have immortality anymore. Heal up here. Basic attack this. 
keep healing up because everybody's not topped off. And now we'll go here with S1. And you'll see it goes for this one now because his attack is stacked up high enough where he gets targeted over the carbuncle. S2 for attack ball. And then put it into immortality. Back here. Try to sleep. And now this is why we didn't go for the S3 before. We're going to strip this immortality. And hopefully Camilla laps him because he'll be slowed. And then we just pick him off. There you go. And now you just focus down the carbuncle. Shield up. I'll use all my might. Your efforts are future. I will do my best. It's going to be okay. I will continue my training. Stay calm. An opening. Rationally. Let's fight together. I have zero time. All right, and this will defense break it here, <laughs> and then it should be pretty easy to rush it down at this point. Then the arrogance of a fool. Is, is it my turn? Here I go. All right, we can just S3 here. Try to stack up souls. We're going to need a lot of souls on the next floor. S2 up here. And then on to the next floor here. All right, barrier up. And now you want to hit Kawana with Brig if you don't have high crit chance because you don't want to just randomly get burns on your whole team. So we go S1 here. But because Kawazu has the highest attack, you'll just go right into him with this. Now with Montmorency, you want to soul burn her S3. This will give immunity to everybody. And that way you can just circumvent the entire fight's mechanics for a couple of turns. S1. I'll keep going. We can just try to sleep Kawana here in order to invalidate her turn. I have zero tolerance. We can S3 to defense break him and keep the slow on him. For your reckless I will continue my we S3 here. Do not soul burn this. You will lose your immunity and put her at risk. She'll take a bunch of burns potentially. All right, we can just S3 for the souls here. I will do my best. Try to sleep Kawana again. Your efforts are we can hit Kawazu because we still have immunity. Stay calm and think rationally. All right, now you have to think about this logically, right? I'm going to S1 here on Kawana because if I go for S2 and get attack buff and then CR push... Lorena, if I lose two coin flips, Lorena dies if she has three burns. So instead, I'm just going to basic attack the uh, Kawana here. Is, and now it that it's Montmorency's turn, it's we could soul burn and put back up our wall. So you use a shield here. Same thing, hit Kawana. There's nothing more absurd. And I'll go into Kawazu. I know I didn't need to do that because I had immunity, but it's fine. Start working on Kawazu now. Sleep Kawana. Kawazu again. Alright, same thing as before. We don't have uh, immunity on Lorena. So what instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attack here. And now you can see here's all of these undispellable burns on my team. We could just go this for the cycling. Alright, so we're going to break one of these. Because these have got to die as fast as we can. Go here. Get the attack ball. She'll take some damage, but it's fine. Kills one. Now you see all of the burns went away because we killed an ad. Soul burn obviously once it gets to Montmorency's turn. Pain away the spirit of a commander. 
And then we still want to get rid of this other ad. I'll keep going. Heal. Going to be okay. Your efforts are futile. Barrier up. I'll use all my might. Are you finished fighting? Basic attack here. And if you get the S3 follow up here, it's just obviously going to set up uh, on Kawazu, get rid of his skill nullifier, slow him down. Heal. Kill the ad. Alright, now back to focusing down Kawazu. Your suffering is self inflicted. I have no mercy to spare. Ooh, didn't get the crit. For your reckless grief. I'll bring an end to this. Alright, same thing. Soul burn, get the wall back up. And then we go heal here for Lorena. Take our 50-50 chance. Look at my cooldowns. Mont Morancy doesn't have it, so I'm just going to S1 here. I don't want to risk taking another burn. Heal tree proc there, so we get our thing back. Adds her back up, so we're gonna go barrier. Break a skill now. There's nothing more absurd than the arrogance of a fool. The spirit of a commander. All right, we go basic here. Let me demonstrate. Back up here. That one's already really low, so let's just kill this one instead. I'm ready. I will do my best. Soul burn here. Get back our immunity, heal everybody full. We can go basic here. Try to get this down as fast as I can. Mm, let me look at my cooldowns. Rig probably can kill this, so instead I'm just going to have her go here. For the damage. Rig kills here. And then we just rush down Kawazu here. The order of the shield does not back down. Basic here. Your suffering is self-inflicted. S3 here. Each outburst. You degrade yourself further. I'll help you. S1 here for the cycling. We go. The fatal strike. I'll cut your throat. Same thing here. If I get a non-crit here, we might be in trouble. But instead, what I'm going to do is we're just go into Kiwana here. I'm ready. I will continue. And then I'll go S1 here. Is and if I had gotten it here, if I got a burn from Lorena at that point, we could still just soul burn and get out of it. Barrier up with Brig. And since everybody has immunity, you don't really care. You could just hit him here if it doesn't crit. No big deal. For your reckless greed. I'll help you. Uh, we can try to just, I guess, sleep Kawana here. The spirit and then now, because I have two turn immunity, and he's basically dead anyway, we could just soul burn for the style points in case we don't kill. We get an extra turn and just kill him then. And there you have it. Abyss 113 in a nutshell. Just be mindful of whether or not your character actually has a real chance to crit Kawazu on this floor. Make sure you're not accidentally CR pushing yourself into burns you don't need to take. Take it slow and steady. Look at how much immunity you have. Soul burn correctly with Mont Morancy. These are the keys to success here on the floor. If you have any other questions, ask them down in the comment section below. And post other clears that you've had success with so that other players can see as well if it's not this exact team. As always... Enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss 114. Later now.